The Douglas TBD Devastator, a torpedo bomber developed in the mid-1930s, marked a significant step in naval aviation history. It was the US Navy's first all-metal monoplane and the first widely used carrier-based monoplane. Moreover, it was the first aircraft in the US Navy to include a completely enclosed cockpit and hydraulic folding wings, features designed to maximize operational efficiency on aircraft carriers. The need for a new torpedo bomber was driven by the Navy's recognition of the increasing importance of carrier-based air power and the limitations of the existing biplane torpedo bombers, which were becoming outdated as aviation technology advanced. The Devastator was designed to offer increased range, speed and payload capacity, making it a formidable tool for attacking enemy ships, particularly capital ships like battleships and aircraft carriers. The Devastator was a relatively large aircraft, with a length of approximately 35 feet and a wingspan of 50 feet. It was powered by a single Pratt & Whitney R1830 Twin Wasp radial engine, which provided 850 horsepower and gave the aircraft a maximum speed of about 206 miles per hour. The Devastator was designed to carry a crew of three, a pilot, a bombardier torpedo officer in the nose, and a rear gunner radio operator. The crew positions reflected the aircraft's mission of torpedo bombing. The bombardier would aim and drop the torpedo, while the rear gunner would defend against enemy fighters during the attack run. In terms of armament, the Devastator was designed to carry a single Mark 13 torpedo, the standard aerial torpedo of the US Navy at the time. The aircraft was also equipped with a 30 caliber machine gun in the nose for the bombardier and a 30 caliber machine gun on a flexible mount for the rear gunner. It could also be outfitted with a bomb load of up to 1,000 pounds in lieu of the torpedo for conventional bombing missions. Only one variant of the Devastator was produced, the TBD-1. Initially, the TBD-1 was quite advanced and very well received. When it was introduced in 1937, it was one of the most advanced aircraft of its kind in the world. However, by the time the United States entered World War II, the Devastator was already showing its age and was increasingly outmatched by more modern aircraft. The Devastator saw extensive action in the early months of the war in the Pacific, including the Battle of Midway in June 1942. However, the aircraft's limitations became painfully apparent during these operations. At Midway, Devastators launched from the carriers Hornet, Enterprise and Yorktown suffered heavy losses and achieved little success. Of the 41 Devastators that participated in the battle, only six returned to their carriers. None of their torpedoes resulted in hits on the Japanese carriers. After the Battle of Midway, the remaining Devastators were quickly phased out and replaced by the Grumman TBF Avenger, a more capable torpedo bomber that addressed many of the deficiencies of the Devastator. While the Devastator's service in World War II was brief and marked by heavy losses, it was a pioneer in several respects and represented an important step in the evolution of naval aviation. Despite its shortcomings, it served as a valuable lesson for future aircraft design and underscored the importance of continual technological development in the fast-paced world of military aviation.